House of Squibb presents Academy Award. Tonight, Margaret O'Brien in Los Angeles. Each week, Squibb brings you Hollywood's finest. The great picture plays, the great actors and actresses, techniques and skills chosen from the honor roll of those who have won or been nominated for the famous Golden Oscar of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Science. For generations, the House of Squibb has been known for the high quality and unfailing dependability of its products, each the result of a never-ending quest for perfection. Today, the great family of Squibb products reflects the tremendous advance of science in its contribution to human health and well-being. The name Squibb stands for Progress Through Research. Squibb is a name you can trust. Tonight, Squibb welcomes to Academy Award Margaret O'Brien, who in 1944 was awarded a special Academy Award as the Outstanding Child Star of the Year. Margaret O'Brien will be heard in her famous screen role from Lost Angel. And now, Academy Award. <laughs> is the story of a little orphan who fell into the hands of some very bright characters known as professors. It is a story, too, of Mike, a reporter, and his girl, Katie, and of other characters more or less concerned with the demonstrating of magic to our little girlfriend. The kind of magic this brightest little girl in the world was afraid did not exist. But since it is her story, Let's begin with a statement made to the press by one of the professors when they found her on their doorstep. Ladies and gentlemen, our long search is over. Our subject, a female infant, newborn, has been found. The necessary legal steps have been taken, and the child is in our hands. Today, under the banner of the Pickering Institute, we begin experimenting... <laughs> What he was trying to say was that little Alpha, for that is her name, was going to get the works. Well, six years go by, and Alpha plus the works is ready to be interviewed. And here to interview her is Mike Reed. How do you do? Won't you sit down? Thanks. What paper are you from? The transcript. Oh, a reactionary, isn't it? Oh, I suppose you read it every day. Just the editorials. I go over them with Professor Smith. And uh, what do you think of our editorials? Oh, we find them amusing. Have you prepared a list of questions you want me to answer? Well, uh, I... We could begin by my giving you the schedule of my day. I have an English lesson first, then history, art, and... Then reading and writing and arithmetic, huh? Oh, of course not. I have algebra, economics, Chinese, semantics, and beginning tomorrow, philosophy. Because I'm six years old today. Oh. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Uh, tell me, uh, what do you do for fun? Oh, uh, I like reading best. Oh, reading? Like the uh, Horatio Alger stories, the Bob G. Twins fairy stories, stuff like that, huh? I've been told about them. What? Uh, fairy tales? What's wrong with them? After all, there's no point in wasting time on things that aren't true. Oh, wait a minute. Just what isn't true about fairy tales? Are you serious? Dragons, flying carpets. Now, really. Well, I'll just have to tell that leprechaun I had breakfast with this morning that he isn't real, I guess. A leprechaun? What's that? Oh, a little man, green hair, blue nose, shoemaker by profession, Irish. I suppose you've seen witches, too? Of course. And what about dragons? Do you believe in them? Why, certainly. You've never seen one. Well, if that's not a woman for you... Now, listen, Professor, do you know what a zebra is? Of course. You ever seen a zebra? Well... well but you believe there are zebras, don't you? Yes, but... Well, all right, then. 
I believe there's a whole world of magic outside. All kinds of magic. You do? Sure. Now, mind, uh, some people go their whole lives long and never see it. Naturally, they'll tell you it isn't true. But if you know what you're looking for, believe it in your heart. Well, it's there. You can find it. Can you? Mm hmm. Time for your music lesson, Alpha. Oh, not just yet. Oh, Mr. Regan, could you wait just a few more minutes? No, I'm afraid I haven't any more time, Professor. But uh, don't you worry. I'll take care of that other matter for you. I'll be sure to tell my leprechaun that you say he's not real. Say, Gus, you're a bright reporter with an eye for scoops. What do you make of that coming in the door? What do you mean? Oh, that? Looks like a kid to me. What do you want, little girl? I want to see Mr. Regan. Mr. Michael Regan. Yeah? Why? Well, uh, he's my father. But Mike's not... How do you know? Where is Mike? But the fight's with Katie. No kidding. But what do you know with Katie with the light red temper? And this one wants to see her father. And do she shall. And why shouldn't she? <laughs> I don't know how you escaped from that intellectual zoo you live in. But you did, and you've got me in trouble, so come on, let's get out of here. Oh, hello, Mike. Looking for Katie? She left a couple of minutes ago, and plenty burned, too. Hey, that your kid? No. Anyway, she's just impersonating a kid. Midget, huh? All right, now, for heaven's sake, what do you want? When you came to see me, you made certain statements. You said that there were dragons and flying carpets and witches and, well, magic. What? You said not everybody could, but you knew how to find it. That's what you said. So? Show me. Well, I'll tell you how it is, kid. There... Of course, if it isn't true, please don't feel bad. After all, all men lie. I know that. What? Oh, look, honey, I, I didn't lie to you. There is magic. All kinds. It's what makes people laugh, be happy, and have friends. I told you I could find it. I'll find it for you. But first, we have to go to a certain nightclub and find Katie Mallory, my girl. Oh, why don't we just go look for magic? Why do we have to see her? Because she's very, very angry with me. And since you're the other woman in the case, you will have to help me fix it. All right. How do I do it? Professor. It's very simple. You do it by being exactly six years old. Regan, I've been waiting for you. Oh, you're, uh, you're Packy's brother, aren't you? Yeah. He'd like to talk to you, Regan. He's not in jail, either. What he's got for you isn't for your paper. Duck that kid and come on. Well, if it's not for the paper, it's not for me. You can tell Packy I think he's clear on that rap, too, but there's nothing I can do. I'm not one of his boys. Okay, Regan. But Packy don't ask outsiders to do him favors very often. I don't think you're being smart. <laughs> He's pretty, Mike. Oh, thanks. Oh, I need your spaghetti, Professor. I think Katie's beautiful. Do you like her better than you like me? What? I said, do you like her better than you like me? Don't laugh at me. Oh, Professor, I swear you're getting younger every minute. Do you like me? Why? I don't know. Oh, hey. I like hey, hey. you. Hold on. <laughs> Professor, what's the matter? 
What did I do? Mike, what did you do to her? Oh, hello, Katie. I beat her. What do you think I did to her? He likes you better than he likes me. What's the matter with her? Well, judging from my past experiences, I'd say she's in love. Oh, look, look, I've got to call the Institute. Oh, take it easy, Professor. Baby, he doesn't like me better. Just differently, honest. Now, supposing you got to like me, you'd still like Mike, wouldn't you? People can like lots of people. People with big hearts, that is. Has Mike got a big heart? Yes, darling. Bigger than his head. Professor Vincent, there's a Mr. Regan on the phone. He's fond Alpha. Oh, wonderful. Uh, uh, just a minute, Vincent. Uh... I'm afraid this case looks like measles. And if it is you, you can't bring Alpha back here. This place is quarantined. Hello. Hello. What's that? Oh, man, you're out of your mind. Oh, I don't care who vouches for me. I, I don't care. You're not going to stick me with that kid. What do you mean, instructions? She's human, isn't she? She eats and sleeps, and I keep her face clean. What else is there? <laughs> now, look, Katie, I can't keep the kids. You know how I live. So I was just thinking, your place is right close by, and... Not a chance, Mike. Not a chance. Uh -huh. Why not? Because you're her fairy godmother, my friend. But now she's come to you and said, show me. So you're the fellow who's got to show her, Mike. No one else. Oh, I'll spend lots of time with her. It's just that I... Oh, no. Did you see the way she looks at you? Well, you've got to pay for that look. You're a big guy to that kid. And that means you're the guy who's going to sit up with her tonight if she gets sick on that spaghetti. Come on, Professor. Get your hat. And the guy will have to get up at 8 o'clock tomorrow to get her breakfast. Oh, no, Michael. This time, one of your pigeons has come home to roost. Mike, I like your apartment. I'm glad I'm going to stay with you. You are, huh? Yes. Well, I don't mind you staying with me, Professor. Not if you'll play ball. Well, what I mean is, if you'll kind of not get in my hair... You mean if I will cooperate? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Very well, I will cooperate. And also, if you wish, I will play ball with you. <sighs> Professor, you really are a character. Now, look, my instructions are simple. You keep reasonably quiet, eat what you should, and wash at frequent intervals. Is that all clear? Yes. Okay, then we understand each other. And you start right now. Oh, hey, you don't look so hot, Professor. Maybe it's that green light on your face. I don't think so. I think it's the spaghetti. Oh, no. Oh, oh good heavens. Well, come on. No, no, no. Go ahead. I, I got to answer the phone. No. no wait, wait for me. Oh, ye gods. I... Feel okay now, Professor? Yes. Oh, that's good. You better start getting some sleep. I'll be back as soon as I can. My paper wants me to ring him. But I'll make it fast and be back in no time. You, uh, just get the hay, kid. And pleasant dreams. You won't be scared. Of course not. That would be unintelligent. Okay. Good night, kid. Good night, Mike. Oh, say. I almost forgot something pretty important. A kiss for Cinderella. Good night, Mike. Mike? Is that you, Mike? Huh? Hey, who are you? Alpha, who are you? None of your business. When will Reagan be back? Mr. Regan will be back soon. And he wouldn't like you waving that gun around. Oh, no. What do you want? What's it to you? Obviously, you've been very badly brought up. 
Oh, no kidding. And since you're so intent on staying, please put down that gun and we shall converse. <laughs> well, sure. Sure, leave us do that little thing. <laughs> brisk action that wakes up your whole mouth, leaves it feeling youthful and alive, with a refreshing new sense of cleanness. And that gives you such a fine feeling of assurance when you're meeting people. Your smile will be brighter, and you'll feel brighter every time you use Squib Dental Cream. So, before every date, as well as every morning and night, brush your teeth with Squib Dental Cream. Taste, feel, and see the refreshing difference. Before continuing with part two of Academy Award, we wish to thank Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer for making this story available. Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer are also producers of The Yearling, starring Gregory Peck and Jane Wyman. And now, The House of Squib presents part two of Academy Award, starring Margaret O'Brien in Lost Angel with Marissa O'Brien as Katie and Ira Grossell as Mike. And there is said to be a wonderful bird here Called, uh, called a nightingale, said the emperor. They say it is the best thing in all my great, uh, my great, uh, empire. Empire. Uh, empire. I have never heard him named, replied the, oh no, replied the uh, C-A-V-L-I-E-I. Cavalier. Then why wasn't it M.P. Oh, Packy, it isn't the same at all. You see, Mike! Call it. Huh? Thought I'd pay you a little visit since you wouldn't come and see me. Oh, no, look here, Packy. Shut up. I'll make it short and sweet. Look. You gotta find a guy. Lefty Moran. He's the only one who can clear me on this rap. He saw the whole thing. I can't go looking for him. I'd be picked up in two minutes. But a reporter like you knows every angle, see? So you're gonna do it for me. You get it? Well, you hide out here. Right. I think you should help him. You keep out of this. Why? Because I like Packy. Oh, you're getting like an awful lot of people. Yes, it's getting easier and easier. Look... But, Packy, if I find him, I get the whole story? Sure, but you're wasting a lot of time, bud. Okay. But you'll go right to sleep now, Professor. Okay. And it's for you, Packy. You'll go to sleep, too. But I don't feel like it. I'll read to him some more. Oh, murder. Getting him up here. Is he hurt, Mike? Is he? Oh, he'll be all right. Oh, brother, did I have a time with him. Uh, you're a smart guy, Regan. <coughs> all right, Moran, wake up. <coughs> uh, take a good look, sweetheart. <gasps> Regan, get that kid out of here. This punk didn't witness that shooting, did you? Chump! He did it himself. Nobody's framing me. Oh, listen, you chump. Make him sign a confession. That'll clear you. And then he just walks off, no thanks. No, he doesn't walk off. We call the cops. You pay him off this way, you just put yourself back in jail. Oh, Packy, don't do anything that'll make you go to prison. That would be unintelligent. And besides, I wouldn't be able to see you anymore. And you wouldn't be able to do anything. And you promised you'd show me how to play dice and... Hey. <laughs> you know something, Professor? I think you're right. Come on, start talking, Rat. Furthermore, you cops, you'd have never found that chump if it hadn't been for Regan. You guys can really take lessons from him. 
And that kid. <laughs> oh, boy, what a kid. <laughs> I'll be seeing you, Professor. Remember, always use your own card. Oh, there she is. There's our little Alpha. We caught a gangster, Professor Vincent. And now Packy won't have to go to jail. And the you, cops came. You and... unprincipled man. Is this the care with which you watched over her? Gangsters, criminals. Why, to me, you're no better than one yourself. Don't you dare talk that way to Mike. I hope it gives you some satisfaction to know that you've probably ruined years of work. That you... Well, Mr. Regan, the Pickering Institute has some influence in this city. You haven't heard the last of this. Oh, yes, I have. I've heard the last of it. Get out of here, Vincent. All of you. Let us go home, my dear. But I can't leave, Mike. Mike, I can't no, go. Look, Professor. You came to me, so I'd show you magic. Well, there's, there's loads of magic, isn't there? There's all kinds. I showed it to you, didn't I? Now you've got to go back. The professors are good people, and you've always liked them. But, Mike, it's different when you love people. It's not the same as liking them. I love you, Mike. And when you love people, you have to be with them. Don't you see, Mike? Regan, if I... If I spoke harshly to you, I'm sorry. Perhaps I... Oh, will you... Will you please get out of here? All Mike! Of... Well, you're gone. That's good, huh? Katie, let's get married now, tonight. Let's go someplace quiet. Oh, I've been waiting a long time for you to say that to me, Mike. But it's no. You see, I think I would be too much of a responsibility for you. Whatever it is, you're not willing to give. I saw that just now. So, well, so long, Mike. Okay, so long. But I'm going. I'm getting out of here right now. Shall we try the test, Alpha? It's, it's really simple once you've caught on. Can you do it, my dear? I don't want to. Don't make her go through with it. Alpha, uh, would you like to have Professor Zimmerman read to you for a while? No. Well, uh, would you like to go out for a nice walk? No. Darling, would you like to see Michael? He doesn't want to see me. What exactly was the nature of the magic that Mr. Regan showed you, Alpha? Oh, there were lots of things. There was a flying carpet. It looked like an airplane, but it was really a flying carpet. And then there was a man whose shirt lighted up, and... Alpha, you know, there are explanations of these things, and they're just as entertaining when you understand them. Oh, but that wasn't the real magic. That was just a little kind. And what was the real magic? Loving people. <laughs> Shouldn't leave the door open, Regan. Huh. All sorts of characters could drop in. Are you going someplace? Yeah. Away. Oh, you taking a kid with you? Look, I brought her some junk. Where is she? You'll find her at the Pickering Institute. Regan, you're not putting your kid in an orphanage. No, it's not an orphanage. And she's not my kid. Now, look, Regan, I ain't going to stamp on... Look, no... Packy, you're a nice guy. Keep out of trouble. Behave yourself. Believe anything you want, but get out of my way. I'm leaving. So long. That guy is nuts or something. What goes around here? Somebody touches a hair on that kid's head, I'll knock him off, so help me, I'll... Packy. Katie. Oh, Packy, have you seen Mike? Yeah, yeah, sure, he just scrambled out of here. We've got to find him. Oh, the kid's awful sick, Packy. What? She misses Mike. She hasn't eaten or slept. But no good heel. On and out on her. Let me get on that phone, I'll get the mob out. I guess there's nothing more we can do. He's just vanished. Packy, couldn't the boys find him either? Oh, no, I don't get it. It's the first time they ever let me down that... that Mike just vanished. I can't hold out any hope now for the child. 
She just lies there with her head turned to the wall. Oh, I'd give everything I possess to find Regan. Everything. But don't take no bows, Max. So would we. If he knew. If he read the papers. He'd come. I know he'd come. Where's my kid? Regan! Oh. Mike, I knew you'd come. <laughs> Regan, I'm so glad to see you. I could, oh, I, could, I could shoot you in the stomach. <laughs> did you did you hear them paging you, or did you read about it in the paper? I read what in the paper? Who paged me? What's the matter with you people? Now, look, Vincent, I, I want to talk to you about that kid. Oh, Mike, do you mean you came all on your own? Of course I came on my own. What do you mean? Hey, hey what's happened? Has anything happened to Alpha? You see, she's been rather ill. Nothing serious. What is it? What's the matter with her? Don't you fools know how to take care of a child? Can't I leave my kid here for a couple of days without you? Mike. Oh, Mike. Yes, sir. Mike. Hey, what's, what's all this nonsense about not eating? Oh, you, Mike. You got the other professors so at me. I'm in hot water with Katie. I'll probably lose my job. Oh, Mike, you came. I knew you would. It's magic. Oh, Professor. Professor. Easy. Mike. <clears throat> well, I mean, uh, well, there are just a few details to clear up. Uh, uh, naturally, we cannot turn Alpha over to a bachelor. No. Well, Katie? Of course, darling. Well... We shall continue to supervise the child's education, and it would be advisable for her parents to keep abreast of her course of study. So, I shall send you a guide to an eight-month preliminary course. Never mind, Mike. I'll take care of you and Katie. Honest, I will. It won't be so hard after the first four years. If you study real hard, in fact, it'll be fun. Lots of fun. your part in holiday festivities with greater zest. Let Squib Dental Cream help to give you a pleasant thrill of refreshment every time you brush your teeth. Discover how much Squib Dental Cream contributes to the sense of well-being that makes holidays and workdays more enjoyable. Let the cool mintiness and the brisk, foaming action of Squib Dental Cream tingle your whole mouth away. Your mouth feels cleaner because it is cleaner. And your smile will grow brighter because Squib Dental Cream sweeps away the dullness that hides the natural luster of your teeth. So, for better dental care, for a wide-awake thrill of refreshment any time of day, brush your teeth often with Squib Dental Cream. Use it whenever you want to look your best, feel your best, and make the best impression. Remember to ask tomorrow for Squib Dental Cream. Taste, feel, and see the refreshing difference. Tonight's performance of Lost Angel concludes the series of dramatic performances presented by E.R. Squibb and Sons in association with the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Science. We wish to express our appreciation to Gene Herschel, president of the Academy, and to his associates for their splendid cooperation during our relationship with them. We also wish to thank our writer, Frank Wilson, our musical director, Leith Stevens, and our producer-director, D. Engelbach, and to thank you, our listeners, for your response and interest. Margaret O'Brien appeared tonight by arrangement with Metro Golden Mayor, producers of Till the Clouds Roll By. Marissa O'Brien will soon be seen with Margaret O'Brien in Metro Golden Mayor's 10th Avenue Angel. This is Hugh Brundage bidding you good night for the House of Squib, a name you can trust. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.